Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This is number 16, and this time we're going to create our own methods. So far, everything we've done has been inside of the main method. We've also called other classes methods like readline from the console class. But now we're going to create our own methods. So how do we do that? Now methods can get kind of complicated, so we're going to start at the basics and work our way up slowly. So let's start with the main method and kind of use it as a template. Now we've already talked about this being an argument. We haven't talked about what arguments do yet, but let's forget about arguments entirely. And let's just copy this skeleton here and say static void. Now let's call this our method, no arguments, and an empty code block here. Now the first thing we see is static. And what static is, is called a modifier we're not going to worry about this yet. You just have to have it for now. <laughs> so we're going to make things a little easy on us and just make sure you put this here, but don't worry about it just yet. So we do need to pay attention to the next word, which is void. Now, so void is a return type. That means what our method gives back. So if you remember, we used console read line to get our user input console read lines return type is a string so we can say string input equals console read line and when this method executes it returns a string to populate inside of this variable so really it can be any type but if you want to return nothing use void so this method we wouldn't have anything on the left side we would just call it to do something the next thing we see is our method name. It is case sensitive. It can be anything you want that's not reserved, of course. What comes after that is our parameter list, which are also called arguments. We're not going to worry about these yet. And then the methods code block comes under the declaration here. Okay, now that we know the very basic structure of a method, let's talk about using a method. So let's go up here, and just like we called this, we're going to call our method. Just like that. Now the reason why we don't have a class here is because our method is in class program, main method is in class program, so we're in the same scope. So we could say, program dot our method but it's going to gray it out and it can say name can be simplified so it's telling us we don't need this because we're already in class program this is in class console so we have to specify where it's from so when this executes we get here and it runs our method what it does is it jumps down into this method so we're still in this code block but now we're jumping into a deeper code block here. So we'll execute everything in here before we jump out to this next line here. So right now we're not doing anything. So let's put a right line in here. We'll call this our method here. And now when we run this, we're gonna see that it prints our method here because we run our method, it jumps into our method and executes. So right now this thing is called our method, which is not good naming because when you look at main, you see it's running our method. If you look at read line, you know exactly what it does. So you want to name your methods something that's going to take some action. So why don't we name our method print header and let's make it right. Welcome to our program. And let's add another right line here and put a little divider line and now put print header back up here so what we're going to do is right when our main starts we're going to print header which is going to come in here and write these two lines for us before we pop back out here so now we know how to write a basic method and use a basic method we have to ask the question why do we want a method so why would we say print header instead of just writing these two lines? Well, the answer is methods give us reusability. And that means clean code and no duplication. 
we will go over the no duplication part soon enough, but for now let's focus on clean code. So last few times we've had user input. So we would do a console.write and we would say enter your first name and then we would get the input as a first name and then we would do console.write enter your last name we would get the last name and then we put them together with our concatenation operator so let's just say string full name equals first name plus a space plus last name so this is how we got a full name for our sign up coding challenge before and what we did was we would wrap this whole thing in a while loop so if we did that if we wrap this while true let me put that in there we came in here and we wrote the full name and we ran it our header is going to print it's going to ask for our first name and our last name and then it's going to print our full name which I should have done a right line <laughs> a right line now let's go ahead and put empty right line here for formatting and let's add an empty right line to our method so our header will space down nicely now when we run it again it's a little bit more formatted so now we have a very basic program that does something if you look you say okay here's our entry point main what does it do okay cool we're printing a header i know what that does well then we say while true okay we're infinitely looping over something we're going to write a name and we're going to read line and we're going to write a last name and we're going to read line yada 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 there's not that much code but already you're having to really read all of the lines to see what this pro oops, to see what this program actually does so we can use a method to kind of clean this up and make it more readable so let's assume that we want to do more than just write this full name so we're going to do more actions here maybe like adding it to a list or checking to see what the name is so really what we want our method to do is a single purpose a single action is how you should write a method like print header or get users full name that would be a reasonable method so let's go down here and let's say static void get users full name so there's our basic structure that we've done and now let's take all this code let's cut it and paste it into there and you'll see full name doesn't exist anymore because it now exists down here so now we have a method that is called get users full name and it does all of the code that we did before but we don't have our variable in scope up here anymore and that's where our return type is going to come in so the first thing we need to do is call our method so we're going to call get users full name but what we want it to do is we want it to give us a string that's called full name here but if you look you'll see you cannot implicitly convert type void to string because our method is void so what we need to do is change our return type so when you change a return type of a method to a type that's not void you have to have a return statement so if your return type is not void you must have a return statement it will not work otherwise so the return statement very much like break or continue is a single pink keyword here followed by what you're returning so since we already have our full name from the user all we would have to do in this case is return full name now just a side note you don't have to return a variable you could return an expression you could just say this you could do that and this wouldn't have to exist at all but sometimes it's nice to know explicitly what you're returning just for readability 
So for this tutorial, I'm going to leave it like this. So quick recap, if our method is not void, it is going to be a type, and then the method has to return something of that type. So if it was an int method, we would have to be returning some int. And then once you return it, it comes out of this method call and you can populate it into a variable here. So now when we come back up to main, when we read this, it's very apparent what it does because we print a header while forever, we get a user's full name and we write it. We write an empty line and then we start over and then we get another user's full name. Much easier than reading all of this, assuming that the code in the method is correct. So now we can run it, prove that it does the same thing. We're going to print our header. We're going to ask for a name. It's going to print the name and it's going to keep going. So you can see that it does the same thing, but it does it a lot cleaner. And another thing is the reusability, because say we wanted to update our header or we wanted to update a message asking for the name. Maybe we wanted to change the wordage. Well, all you'd have to do is come up here to print header right click and hit go to definition and it'll take you straight to your method definition and you could change it right there instead of trying to dig through line after line after line to find what you want you can say okay i want to get the user's full name go to definition and it'll take you to it and it makes navigating and updating your code a lot easier in addition to a lot better to read so that's as far as I'm going to go in this video about methods. I know it's a lot to take in, but we're going to go over many examples. And next time we're going to add parameters to the mix. So thank you for watching everybody. I do appreciate you. And until next time, as always, take care.